A prostitute turned cold-blooded killer. This week we discuss Eileen Warnos. Let's open the serial killer file. Nothing about Eileen's childhood could be called normal. Born Eileen Carol Pittman on February 29, 1956 in Rochester, Michigan, she was raised in a dysfunctional family. Eileen's mother, Diane Warnos, was just 15 when she married Leo Pittman in 1954. The two had a rocky marriage, but despite their marital problems, Diane gave birth to two children, Keith in 1955 and Eileen the following year. The marriage came to a final stop after two years when Eileen's father was charged with sex crimes after attempting to rape and murder a seven-year-old girl, the same year Eileen was born. Being a child molester diagnosed with schizophrenia, both children never had a personal connection with their father. Leo Pittman hanged himself in prison in 1969 while serving his time for his sex crimes. Deeming herself to be unfit for motherhood, Diane abandoned the children when Eileen was just four years old, leaving both children orphaned until their grandparents were granted custody over them on March 18, 1960. Though Eileen was under new care, a path of destruction was just waiting to unravel. Growing up with her grandparents was anything but nurturing for the minors. The household exposed her to alcoholism and sexual abuse as Eileen claimed her grandfather was an aggressive drunk who would force her to strip all of her clothing before beating and sexually assaulting her on a daily basis. This eventually led Eileen to engage in ancestral activities with her brother and offering sexual favors at school for cigarettes, drugs, and food when she was only 11 years old. In 1970, at the age of 14, Eileen was kicked out of her grandparents' house after the family discovered she was raped by her grandfather's friend, resulting in a baby she did not want, nor planned on raising. She had no choice but to stay at a house for unwed mothers during her pregnancy. Nine months later, Eileen gave birth to a baby she immediately put up for adoption. Without a family to fall back on, Eileen dropped out of school after giving birth to her son and turned to prostitution as a form of income. Barely able to support herself, she lived by herself in the woods, using her body to earn a living on the streets. In 1974, she found herself at the hands of crime after being charged with a DUI, firing a 22 caliber pistol from her vehicle, and failing to appear at her court case. After discovering her grandmother had passed away from liver failure, Eileen was in search for a new life and hitchhiked her way to Florida in 1976. It was this same year when she met 69-year-old Louis Fallon. Before she knew it, the two were married. Being a newlywed and living in a new state did not stop Eileen from engaging in her destructive lifestyle. The months following into her marriage resulted in many run-ins with the police after she frequently got into violent altercations with locals at bars. She also had a restraining order filed against her by her own husband after she began beating him with his cane and squandering his money. Just nine weeks into the marriage, Lewis filed for divorce, leaving Eileen on the streets once again. On July 17th of that same year, Eileen's brother Keith passed away from esophageal cancer, and with that, she left the last of her family behind. No friends or family left her exposed to a dark criminal lifestyle. The death of her brother resulted in Eileen obtaining $10,000 of his life insurance. With this money, she fled back to Michigan and continued her heinous crimes. From 1981 to 1986, Eileen went on to be charged with numerous offenses such as robbery, fraud, grand theft auto, and resisting arrest from police. After multiple failed relationships with men, she began dating Tyria Moore, a hotel maid she met at a South Daytona gay bar called Zodiac in the spring of 1986. Though Tyria made a living being a maid, the couple were heavily supported by Eileen's prostitution. Constitution. It was at this time that regular crimes no longer satisfied Eileen's criminal nature. On December 13, 1989, two men were searching for scrap metal around Volusia County in Florida when they unexpectedly came across the remains of a middle-aged man wrapped in a carpet. Investigators were able to identify the body belonging to 51-year-old Richard Mallory, who was shot three times with a 22 caliber pistol. His body was discovered several miles away from his 1977 Cadillac. Without a trace in the murder investigation, the mysterious case went cold. 
The killing spree continued to escalate after several male bodies were discovered around Florida. On May 5th, 1990, the body of an unidentified naked male was discovered across the state line from Florida into Brooks County, Georgia. The victim had been shot twice. Investigators were unable to find leads, leaving the case cold. On June 7th of that same year, police were able to identify an additional body of David Spears, who was also found shot with a 22 caliber pistol. Numerous bodies were found having been shot with a 22 caliber pistol, which led police to believe that there was one single killer. On July 4th, 1990, Eileen and her girlfriend abandoned a vehicle belonging to a victim, 65-year-old Peter Seams, after the car was totaled in a car accident. Florida police were able to grab leads from witnesses and were able to retrieve Eileen's fingerprints from the car, the same fingerprints which matched her identity on police criminal databases. A media campaign to track down the serial killer caused national headlines. On January 9th, 1991, police arrested Eileen at a biker bar in Volusia County. Tyria was discovered in Pennsylvania the following day and agreed to confess what she knew in exchange for immunity from her prosecution. After hours of her girlfriend pleading with her, Eileen admitted to the murders of Richard Mallory, David Spears, Charles Karskadon, Peter Seams, Troy Barres, Charles Humphreys, and Walter Antonio, claiming that every man attempted to rape her, leading her to kill them as a form of self-defense. On January 27, 1992, Eileen was convicted of the murder of her victim, Richard Mallory. After her sentencing, psychiatrists testified that Eileen suffered from borderline personality disorder and antisocial personality disorder. Just four days after her conviction, Eileen was sentenced to death. However, after her trials for the murders of several other victims, she was sentenced to six death sentences. Psychiatrists assessed Eileen using the psychopathy checklist. Scoring 32 out of 40, the diagnosis deemed her to have psychopathy, making her a highly unstable criminal who would have to be under strict observation while serving her time. While awaiting death row, Eileen was incarcerated in the Florida Department of Corrections Institution, where she stated, I killed those men, robbed them cold as ice, and I'd do it again, too. The execution of Eileen Warnos took place on October 9, 2002, by lethal injection, requesting nothing but a single cup of black coffee as her last meal. Eileen's remains were cremated and her ashes were spread beneath a tree in her hometown in Michigan. She was the 10th woman in the United States to be executed since 1976. That's all in this file. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel now by either clicking on screen or below this video. And I will see you next time.